Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to the Musical Inner Tube. I'm Don Rooney. The music you're hearing behind us, our theme music entitled Get All the Women to Dance, is being played by a musical group that has never been in the same room together. At the end of every Musical Inner Tube, I give thanks for our theme music provided by virtual band Car Radio Dog. Well, today, we'll talk to members of that musical group, and one of them is none other than John Timpain. That's right, Don. You know, it was in 1998 that two of us went into a music store and we bought what was then a new invention, a digital recorder. And it allowed us to make almost professional recordings of music that we played at home. Well, we would drive that recorder hundreds of miles to other people's houses and record them. And I even took it on an airplane across the United States to record musicians in California and little by little, we cobbled together an album. Our very first album, it took us 10 years, and since then we've made three more, and we're coming out with our fourth album right now, and it's called Sin Embargo. I am delighted to welcome to the musical interlude two of the members of Car Radio Dog, Kevin Timpain, my brother, and Richard Lindsay, my brother in music. Welcome to our little podcast, guys. Hello, thank you for having us. Hello. Thank you for having Richard. So, um, Kevin, why don't you give your sense of uh, our latest album, you know, what you like about it, uh, where it's going, and uh, and how we made it. Any of those will be good. I want to start at the, at the you know, nearest end, and we can work backward in time. It, it, at a high level, uh, to quote John Lennon, it'll be the usual rubbish, but it won't cost much. That's the bargain <laughs> we're striking up. Uh, no, honestly, like a lot of our our records, we're we're not a young band, I would say. So we're not worried as much about developing a sound specific that seems to get repeated in each song that we choose. But we are interested in melding a lot of different styles. So, as my daughter would say, if you ever listen to one of the Car Radio Dog albums, if you turn on one song and you don't like it, just hit fast forward and the next song will be a totally different genre, but it'll be high quality. But what I like about this uh, particular CD and similar to the others, but a little bit more so is we took great efforts to give people a chance to do things they don't normally do uh, to make sure that everybody was having fun on the songs and make sure that we don't lose that fun when we record it. And I think that does come through on a number of different songs that we've got where they might be hard rock and bluesy and yet they're still fun. So um, I enjoy that very much to get that out of the output that we've, uh, that we've gotten from this particular set of songs. Hey Richard, how are you doing? Good. You and Kevin are our main um, producers, I think we can say that. And that means that you're sort of the center of the whole organism in a way. And uh, I guess, how many people did we use on this album besides uh, uh, the three of us and also uh, the great uh, singer and multi-instrumentalist uh, Dan McCarvel? Uh, and so sort of that that four plus Megan Timpain, right? Kevin's daughter and my little niece. So let's say that's the central five. How many? How many leads? How many other people did we have? How, what was our total uh, weight in people? I can't even remember. Well, we had our occasional drummer Mikey. We had your sister Mary. We had um, Kevin's son Daniel for a minute. We had your son Connor, uh, and we had Danny's daughter Katie. Mm -hmm. We had Megan's friend Tiana. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'm forgetting, uh, we had Heather, people. we had Heather Robbins, Heather, the, yes. the vocal. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we had, uh, my friend Eric Siegel on one track, um, and Dave Barry played mandolin yeah. on the track for us as well. Yes. Uh, yes. We don't focus on one individual as a lead singer. And in this album that we've got, we've got more of kind of multi-generational lead singers. So we've got hmm. we've got four different singers that are, are singing lead or rapping, and they're all in the next generation after after us. So yeah. we're mixing it up. We have six different lead singers. We have a rapper as well. Um, and all of them are in our, our kids' generation, but they seem to share the same affection for music or are 
have studied music in school and are already performers. And we are just latching on to them if we can uh, to pull in <laughs> some high quality and also to fit the style of the songs that we are recording. Um, and, and as an example, uh, my, we suggested to my daughter, Megan, who's got a great voice, and we know that from previous recordings, that she sing one of John's songs, which is All I Do Is Forget You, kind of a country song. And she said, hey, wait a minute. Um, our friend, her friend, Katie, who's also the daughter of, of Danny McCarville, our other lead singer, said, Katie is a really great country singer. Let's try her out. And sure enough, she just knocks it out of the park as the lead singer and really feels the country style of that particular song. Yeah, why don't we hear that one right now? This is called All I Do Is Forget You. Richard, let's talk about, without getting too technical, how you put this all together. If you get a lead vocal from one source and drums from another, 
and a bass line from another and a guitar from another. How do you put it all together? How do you uh, meld it all into one song, especially considering you're getting it from different audio sources that may all not be exactly the same technically? Well, asking me not to be too technical is like tying my hands behind my back, but I will do my best <laughs> nonetheless. Um, well, it it starts e- even a little earlier than uh, getting the tracks. Um, we have to give some thought into how we're, once we sort of know what we want on the song, how we're going to get it done, because um, we have almost never been inside an actual recording studio to do any of this. We do all of it in our homes or uh, in somebody else's space. Once in a while, we've been to home studios. But uh, say if we realize, for example, that we have to absolutely have to have live drums on something, then we go to somebody's house, record the drums, and then we take the tracks home. I've sort of functioned as the the storehouse for uh, for the recorded tracks. So it everybody gets to hear everything, but it sort of uh, resides with uh, with me. So there's a kind of a central copy that is the ongoing truth, uh, if you like, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, subject right. to change. Um, and then as people do things remotely, um, and and this is interesting because we don't actually all have to have the same software to do it. We uh, the three of us use a, a type of recording software called um, Waveform, which is a DAW program. But all that really matters for the tracks, individual tracks we get in from other people, is that they're in a particular file format, which is for us is typically Wave, but we could also take TIFF files, which is what you get in Apple and so on. Um, So then once that happens, um, I fly it into the kind of the master project and then just make sure there are no issues with alignment. Like sometimes if you did it elsewhere, the count off is different. So the track is off by a measure to fix all that stuff, make sure it's sitting pretty and all that. And then once, once I get that, usually I'll send things out to everybody to listen. Okay, here's what we have so far. Here's, here's the track that we got. Um, what's next? And then we sort of confer on, uh, what else we have to get in there or if that track has to be done again, or if there's a technical problem with the sound of it, or um, if that gives you an idea for something else that you didn't think about before Um, that happens too, because we don't necessarily have everything planned out from the beginning. Sometimes there are plenty of happy accidents where um, you get to one point and then the light bulb goes off over Kevin's head or John's head or mine. And we figured, Oh, what if we did this? My Indian prayer bowl. Let's try that. <laughs> yes, right. Kevin Kevin had that idea of having uh, an Indian prayer bowl that he can make a, a start a very beautiful sound. Uh, don't let the sun go down. Is that right, Kevin? Better not let the sun go down.
does undone Can't see the sun Kids tell me it's gone I love this song in so many ways. Uh, first of all, uh, Kevin is the writer of the main body of the song, but uh, he imported something that Richard had written, oh, about 40 years previously. Right, Richard? And, about uh, that, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we twiggled it and twuggled it, and that became uh, a, uh, a middle part that was played with uh, flute and guitar. And then we come back into the bombastic main section. And it comes in and goes out on this beautiful tone that Kevin creates on the Indian prayer bowl. Um, and there were a lot of, I think there were a lot of uh, fun accidents on that, uh, you know, where, where the vocals should go, what the, you know, a, a lot of, I think our innovations this time were on, um, you know, the supporting vocals, you know, what they should do, where they should be placed, what combination of vocals you would have. We tried to keep mixing it up. Uh, yeah, that song is probably uh, your t typical punk 5-4 song uh, with <laughs> my, uh, Latin jazz interlude in the middle, which is, you know, uh, every punk band has one of those. Right. Yeah, tad formulaic, but... Yeah. And just to, just to respond to what Richard was saying, though, just so you, you don't get the wrong idea, even though we do a lot of this at home, all of us do have basically home studios and with the electronics these days it's easy to do that you know we all have keyboards we've all got electronic instruments we do have the same software and including danny so there's four of us who have the same software so it's it's easy to to exchange files just through uh, file transfer over the internet uh, and we're pretty careful about it so we do actually use the a, a drummer in a studio but only on about a third to a half of the songs and then we take great pains in the quality. So Richard and I slave for months and sometimes over a year to just get the quality to a level where you wouldn't recognize the difference between what we're producing and what one of the major studios are doing for a major label artist. And we use professional masters and mixers, and they help us at the end of the project to really tighten up the sound and bring it up to... The, the right quality where we put it in, we put every song in rotation with other songs to see if we can tell a difference between the quality. So it's doable to do these kinds of things in a virtual band and still get the same quality that you might get going into a studio. Do you ever hook up all, uh, all, all of your uh, different home studios on a, on a live feed and play together sort of the way that uh, some musicians did on zoom during the pandemic? We've never done that. It would be, there are some technical difficulties with that. There is an inevitable lag time. It works better with musicians who are within a few miles of each other. For instance, I'm in the uh, the East Bay. If, if I could play probably with someone in Walnut Creek and someone in the city maybe, but coming from New Jersey or Southern California or Texas or whatever, it'd probably be too big a lag. That's the other thing I wanted to mention is that we are uh, bi-coastal at least. I mean, a couple of us live out here in, in the East Coast, and Kevin and Richard and just about everybody else lives on the West Coast. It's crazy. But we did, at one point, we had people living in four different states, but we now have, we now try to make the effort at least a couple times a year to put the three of us together. Um, and with anybody in Southern California, I do make trips down to do recording with them. And I'll bring a little Porta, Porta Studio with me with all the electronics that I need. Uh, to record voices, instruments uh, on some of the songs. So even a song on the album like Sick of the Cloud, we recorded guitars down in Whittier and we recorded vocals in La Habra in Southern California. And we recorded the keyboards and lead vocals in San Francisco. We did uh, bass and the drums Richard pulled together out of his home studio and we had a rapper come in 
that we recorded here in San Francisco. So we we do make ourselves pretty mobile, and it's an effort for us to see each other, get the creativity as well, that we do try to get together in the same place for long weekends to do some of the creation as well. Well, let's listen to that now. This is Sick of the Cloud from the new Car Radio Dog album, Sin Embargo. I know that um, home studios are now commonplace in music, as you're talking about, Kevin. And uh, a lot of major musicians are obviously have home studios, as well as people who just do it for fun in, in a garage setting. But is this something that um, music is headed towards, where people can put a whole album together in their homes without having to worry about going into a professional studio ever? It's already there. Uh, it, it's it's not heading towards it. It's it's here. It's for years now. It's been possible to make uh, a professional quality recording in whatever spare space you have. And uh, obviously, some of us have bigger, more elaborate spare spaces than others. But um, if I recall right, I think um, the first Billie Eilish record was just her and her brother in a spare bedroom or something. Because you could do it anywhere now. I mean, when we first started in 98, um, I would record my parts on this digital recorder. Then I'd have to put it in my car and drive 100 miles up to Richard's house. And he would he would download it with a wire into his computer because there weren't any easy ways yet. I mean, you could do it, but it wasn't easy to basically send a very large file because, you know, sound files are enormous. It, was, it wasn't until a couple of years later where you could do that fairly easily. Now you could do it really easily. You can make a whole album online. There are, uh, there are web services that just let you make albums on the web service, you know. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's fairly easy. And a lot of people, you know, uh, don't go to anybody else's house. They just stay at home and make, make a record. I think that it's common for people to make the records at home and to make albums at home. 
I don't think it's as common that people take as take as long or as great pains as, as we do on the quality. I mean, you, we do you do hear, uh, and I do, and Richard does, I know as well, and I'm sure John, with the bands that you've been in, do hear a lot of recordings of local bands or bands that are trying to do similar things, but the quality is typically an unfinished product. So there's uh, there's these additional steps of both getting to a mix that you really, really are okay with and then having a professional mixer mix it down. And we go through as many as 10 or 11 iterations on an individual song of mixes and then get a mastering uh, agent to come in and take the entire uh, sound of that and balance it and make it sound right. It's a really, at the very tail end of the process, you're done with the writing, you're done with the singing, you're done with the playing. And then it still takes a few months to really get it right. And it's, it's painful. So I think a lot of bands kind of skip that because it's, it does sound good to you when you're doing the demos. And so they, they kind of go past that, that real honing of the quality. And that's noticeable there. I've run into probably 10 or 15 bands who have shared materials with me over the last six months and say like two, have a really high quality, even if you don't care about the songs one way or another, but the quality is something that you could hear on the radio or you could hear compared to some of uh, the largest artists. Um, I think a a great example uh, of how we make a song and how the song ends up sounding just terrific, and this is going down uh, to Kevin and to Richard and what they do uh, in this sort of magical way that we're talking about is um, a song called Whistling. And it really is a car radio dog concoction par excellence because um, back in the 80s, I had made a tape and I made a sort of an instrumental song uh, and whistled along to it uh, you know, on a tape. And Kevin found it 40 years later and said, hey, we should do this. And, um, and so he and Richard uh, set up this lovely arrangement and, they, uh, and Kevin wrote some words and then Megan uh, was the lead singer, and it, and uh, Richard plays a beautiful guitar. And uh, as as a, as the song went on, you have lovely vocals. Uh, you have uh, good supporting vocals. I think it's Kevin and and uh, and I. Uh, and I ended up playing. Uh, it was my debut on mandolin, <laughs> and and some and some flute. Right. It just it just gets in there. So, um, so let's listen to that because it, it, we, it built itself. It sort of was the airplane that built itself as it flew and it's just gorgeous. I think Kevin and Richard really outdid themselves on this. It's called whistling. Hey, don't forget the horns on this one too. There's a, a horn ensemble. And then there's also a a solo, uh, muted trumpet that Kevin plays towards the end. It's, it's a kind of unlikely combination, but, uh, it is another one of those happy accidents that, uh, we're actually pretty pleased with. We had recordings of birds whistles to start it off to give it a nice ambiance. Um, and we have a friend who works as a data scientist. So he tells me all the time, oh yeah, I'm a scientist. I can clean that up for you. And sure enough, working for Facebook, they had all sorts of tools that we didn't and took all the background noise out. So there's a lot of things that went into making this a, a really nice sounding song. Thank you. 
Yeah, you just heard whistling. Uh, Megan uh, has a friend who said she didn't know the lyrics to that song, but she can't get it out of her head. So she walks around the house going, when I'm sweeping and when I'm vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> and that still has a, a, a particular resonance and charm for all of us that really seriously hearing somebody sing your song, uh, there can't be any more gratification than that. So Richard, yeah. uh, you uh, you haven't... Um... Uh, selected a song yet for us to play? What's one that you would like to play, and why? Oh, let's uh, let's think about that for a second. Oh yeah, I would like to hear uh, "Summer Long" because that is again something different, and it's actually two things that are different, not only from the other things, but from each other. And uh, before we got on here, Don and I were talking a little bit about uh, my recent forays into Brazilian music, and you'll hear a little bit of that in this one. And uh, again, as as you'll hear from, as Kevin said earlier, you'll hear that we took some considerable pains with the background vocals on this. I would say more on this record uh, as a whole than on uh, any of the previous records. And I think it pays off on this one. Uh, Kevin's daughter, Megan, sings on this and just does a beautiful job. A Heather is on it too. And um, this this is exactly what we were talking about earlier that the combination of styles, seeing if we can make that work. And in this one, we really do think we make like three different styles work in a single song.
and it will be again. Who we belong, summoning ordinary miracle of overwhelming lies. Oh, autumn come and leaves whirling gold. It's a tenderly starry and cold. Spring arrives and the way we renew. We belong, summoning. So this is a, a, a labor of love, obviously, for you guys. Um, I'm wondering, where does it go? Do you just keep ch- turning out the CDs, whatever the, the mood strikes? Uh, or or is there are there grander plans involved for Car Radio Dog? Well, after having seen the Let It Be uh, documentary and realizing that the Beatles never did do that live on a boat drifting into Tripoli or... or uh, Istanbul, whatever it was they were going to do. We know that's still open. Nobody's done that yet. I would have to concede that world domination is off the table, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that. I mean, uh, doing another album is always what we think about after we've finished an album. You know, maybe, maybe we will, maybe we won't. But, you know, there's obviously songs out there that we could put together for a new album. I think it's new, John. I mean, um, I mean, we may find that we we drive each other nuts doing this stuff because we do. Um, as, yes, we do. We've got we very creative minds, and we've all got ideas, and we're all very strong willed. But that's why things, when they get finished, end up sounding so good. But even on this one, we've got to come back at least and do the, the title song to this album, which is not on this album. <laughs> that's it's, it's, it's we do have a song called Scene Embargo, but we didn't included in this batch but we always end up with i mean john's written hundreds of songs um and certainly between richard and i we've got another 60 to 100 songs that we could choose from and we're writing constantly so it's it'd be hard to think that we wouldn't continue making some types of albums whether or not they're going to be 14 songs and a cd or maybe they're five songs at a time um maybe we release a couple songs here and there we've still got even from the last batch, we started with a list of about 35 songs and culled it down into 14. So I think we've got a lot to choose from, and it would it would seem a shame if we don't continue making more and more music. I think sometimes you just have to get through the frustrations that you can have taking as long as we do to get it done, uh, which is part of making it sound good. For all the convenience of the the process, the fact that we can do these things in our spare rooms, there are some things that just 
take longer to hash out. Uh, it there if we get together in a room and bounce ideas off each other, we can make some decisions in a matter of minutes. If it's a matter of circulating MP3s and having a long email trail or having phone conversations, all that s- stuff sort of takes longer. It's it's worth it for the convenience, but it does actually impose a little bit of, of its own burden on the process. If we had time for one more song, uh, sort of on the theme of uh, resilience, the last song on the record, uh, Walk Away From The Darkness, is kind of all about that. It's also kind of the biggest sounding song with the most elements in it in some way, or at least the most elements going on at, at one time. Children, walk away from the darkness. Shake off the weight of the past. The highway is vast. Turn homeward at last. You know the way. Children, walk away from the darkness. Get a good grip on the light. Both hands hold on tight. Walk into the light. Arising from the sun, the human pantomime. Party all the time. Sadness. All of your suffering is real. It's proof that you feel, believe you can heal. And baby, you will. Children, in the face of the madness, tear all illusions apart as tough as your heart. Let me
walk away from the darkness Get a good grip on the light Both hands hold on tight Walk into the light Into the light Into the light Well, Richard Lindsay and Kevin Tim Payne, thank you for coming on to our lovely podcast and talking about one of the bands that I love the most in the world, Car Radio Dog, a virtual band which has never played in the same room ever. And yet on uh, four whole albums now, uh, you can hear a sound very much like uh, people actually playing together in a studio or live in concert. And uh, perhaps we'll do a fifth one soon. So thank you for being on the musical inner tube. Well, thanks for having us, guys. Yeah, Don, thanks for uh, for uh, letting us listen to your podcast and, and now being a part of one. Thank you for listening to The Musical Inner Tube. Instead of our usual closing remarks, we'll just ask you to check out our website, musicalinnertube.com. And we'll thank the virtual band Car Radio Dog by playing our theme music, Get All the Women to Dance, in its entirety. So here you go. Enjoy, and we'll see you next week.